have a, um, a small business here in Bedford um, called Coos Creek Studio. We do an art gallery and we do custom framing. Um, I've had the business for five years. Before that, I was a um, high school teacher. So, um, and I do miss it, so it's nice to be here. Thanks for having me. All right. Now, I understand for part of your paper, or you're doing a paper on Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo. How many people have Googled either one of those um, artists? Have you Googled, did you do the image search? Did you look for the images? Yes. Mm -hmm. kind of, some kind of weird stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to try to do today is help you um, kind of figure out what you need to be looking for when you're looking at, um, at works of art. Okay? So I've brought a few pieces. I'm going to work with you as a group on the first three. And then I'm going to divide you up into groups, and then y'all get to um, look at works of art and tell us what they are and what they mean. Okay? These are all, except for the first one I'm using, these are all works by local artists and local living artists. Okay? They're artists that we have in our gallery. This, there's over a hundred working artist in Bedford County, so there's lots and lots and lots of talented people here. Okay, so I'm going to give you some kind of, we're going to kind of experiment here at first. Okay, we're going to start with this piece. These are all pieces that belong to me. They hang in my house, and I love them dearly. Okay, and I love them because I think they have really profound meaning. This is, this is the piece the only piece that's not by a local artist. Okay? Can anybody guess where this piece may be from? Um, nice. nice. Great, great, great. Yes. Not right, but it's a great guess. Does it, look, it looks old. Okay. I don't know that it is old, um, but it may be. I bought it in a store in Washington, D.C. Okay? It's actually an African tribal mask. You can see in the back, there's actually eye holes. So in an African tribal situation, a dancer, a storyteller, would have worn the mask, okay? And the mask is meaning, the shape and the style of the mask is, is meant to convey meaning just as the story or the dance uh, would convey meaning, okay? So, when we go to decipher a piece of art we don't understand, and you may encounter this when you look at Diego Rivera's or Frida Kahlo's work, um, you start by, with identifying what you see, okay? We save the meaning to last. So you just kind of describe what you see, and in that description you begin to um, discover some of the meaning, okay? So, who wants to start? What do you see here? Just, it's not a hard one, just what do you see? A woman. Ah, okay, what about that woman's unusual? She's naked. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we have a naked woman, okay? Excellent. She's standing on top of the head. Absolutely. What else? Is it a human head? No. Oh, two inches. Yeah. Or actually, I think that's the mouth. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the face has human characteristics but it's clearly not a human head, all right? Okay, what else? So it's got a nose, it's got small eyes, it's got little teeny tiny ears. It's got a really strange shaped mouth. Okay, what else? Descriptive-wise is significant about this piece. 
poles or sticks behind her? Mm -hmm. The poles or sticks that are, seem to be coming out of the head of this face. Okay? So, now we've described the piece. Now let's see if we can figure out its meaning. Okay? So, if it's not a human head, what might it be? Could be an animal, right? Could be, what else? Could be an animal, and this is hair. It's a great description. Could be spiritual. Could be spiritual, absolutely. It could be a deity or a god. And these are like rays. Have you ever seen pictures of Jesus with a halo and there's light coming from behind his head? It could be that same kind of thing. So, we've got an animal, a god, and in primal or primitive cultures, Animals and gods are almost or often simultaneously the same thing. So we've got this deity and we've got this naked woman. So what could the story be? What could the narrative be that the dancer or the storyteller could be trying to convey. It's hard to tell with this figure, but can you tell me this woman figure, okay? She looks pregnant. Okay, she's got an extended belly. Okay, and her breasts are full, which may mean suggest that she's she's going to breastfeed. Okay? Alright? So got all these component parts. We figured it out by looking at it. What might be the meaning? Okay. You're a young couple. Just got married. What's one of the first things you're going to want? Or maybe want? A baby. A baby. Okay. okay, so we have a deity, a god figure, a pregnant woman. What might be the story that's emerging here? Does it symbolize maybe like the birth of a hero? Oh, I like that. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Or the hope, the hope of the birth of a hero. Okay? All right. Many times, even in our Christian ceremonies, when you go to a wedding, at some point in the wedding, um, the pastor or the officiant will say something like, may this marriage be blessed with children. Okay? So this could be the same kind of narrative. Instead of a priest or a pastor, it would be the shaman or the, the medicine man coming to visit a young couple and hoping to bless them with fertility. Okay? Okay, so the art begins to communicate the message, the deeper message. Okay, that's what art is about. Art is about communicating something. As I have, as I admitted to the last class, I've tried to learn Spanish four times. And I have failed miserably all the times. Um, but somehow looking at a text in Spanish, okay, and I'm sure you've all been here, look at the text and you, you can pick out key words, key nouns, verb here and there. But putting the whole picture together is often a struggle. Okay? Art can be the same way. And especially when you're looking at the two artists you've been asked to look at for your paper, that is particularly true. Diego and Frida are two of the, the highlights, the bright lights in 20th century art. Okay? Artists from all cultures look to these two artists um, for what they've created. Okay? And so, you're going to have to look at those images too, and you're going to have to try to figure out. Now you can take 
the easy way and Google the image and then find out what some really smart art his historian had to say about the image. But that's a whole lot less interesting in my mind than sitting with the image itself and trying to figure it out for yourself. Once you figure it out for yourself, you fall in love with the image and it becomes so much more meaningful to you. All right. So we're going to do three of these and then we're going to divide up. Okay? This is a graphite drawing by Amy Carter. She's a local artist. It's of her pet goat. Okay? Now, I will make the argument that great art always has a universal message. Okay? While this may have been used in tribal Africa to, to bless the fertility of a young couple, okay, it had a particular use in a particular culture, but it also has a universal message. That, that message of fertility for young married people is a universal message. Okay? So likewise, all great art has a universal message. Okay? So, let's start again, step one. Just tell me what you see. What are the major components to the picture? And then maybe in figuring out those component parts, you figure out meaning. Okay? Everybody see? So what are the major components? The goat. The goat. The fence and the collar. Okay, those are the three major components to that picture. Okay? How do those relate to one another? And what do those components tell you about this goat? Okay, he's confined, he's owned, and he's a pet. Excellent. Anybody else? Okay. All just information you've gained from looking at the picture. But is there more to the picture? Does the goat look happy? Is the, is the goat content to be in that fence? Right. That goat wants out. Okay? So if all art has a universal, or all good art, all great art, has a universal message, what might be the universal message Amy Carter's trying to communicate to you? That people and things don't like to be confined. That's a beautiful way to say that. People and things don't like to be confined. So when you say that, you're not talking about goats, are you? You're talking about human beings too. Okay? What else? Thank you. Truthfully, this this process shouldn't be foreign to any of you because you all listen to music. It's the same thing you musicians do. They take one particular story of a love that's gone wrong, or a best friend that's done you bad, or some happy moment. And they take their personal experience and they make it universal. And all of a sudden you're singing their story, but you've made it your own. Okay? Art does the same thing. So what else? Dark background. Uh-huh, right. But what would the dark background tell you? That's a great compositional element. Hell. <laughs> it's a great metaphor. Moving out. Like the darkness that the he's sad. is feeling. He's not happy. He's not happy. The darkness. He's trying to move into the light. Or he's trying to move into freedom. Okay? So all of a sudden, a plain old picture of a goat means 
so much more. Okay? That's what good art is about. All right, we're going to try one more. This piece is a little small, and we'll walk around with it. It's called Smoke Break. It's a, um, it's a painting by Karen Carter. Karen actually has a studio. She had a studio here in Bedford, and she's since moved to Rona. That's impressive. Yeah, I have those pictures. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, let's pick on some of the folks that haven't talked yet. What do you see? What, this is the easy part. What's the compositional elements? What do you see in the picture? A bench, okay. A lady. A lady. Brick wall. A brick wall. <laughs> no, these are great. These are all part of the story. They are not accidental. A window. A window. Okay, you see one window. Two. All right, closed window, an open window, a woman on a bench. She's looking at something. Yes. Oh, do we know what she's looking at? No. Can't tell. Okay, what kind of job does this woman have? Cook. Cook? Cleaning? She's wearing her hair nose, hmm? probably cooking. Probably cooking. I think you're right. Do you think she likes her job? <laughs> okay. Okay. The fact that she's smoking might tell you something, too. Okay? She's dependent on something. She's got habits. Okay? Okay. So if you think a woman, she's smoking, she's got a job she doesn't like, this is a pretty depressing picture. Or not. Now let's talk about what Karen is trying to communicate in this small picture. And the composition tells us what she's trying to communicate. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> oh, she's maybe like looking towards a better life. Oh, I like that. What in the composition may give you a hint to that? I think you're absolutely right. It's like, well, they're not so dark colors, and she's looking towards the open window. Yes. Mm -hmm. ah. She's got her back to the closed window. She's looking toward the open window. Okay? So this could be that moment between time. When we we all been there, we know we've got to make a decision. Okay? We just gotta get up off the sofa and do it. Okay? And this is that moment. You know, we don't know that she got off that bench. Okay? But it is could be a moment of great hope, okay? And it's a place we've all been, okay? So that makes it a universal message. Now think about that when you're looking at Diego and Frieda's work. It's the same thing. It's why their work is so important, all right? So you have the tools now, okay? We're going to divide up into, I think, four groups. All right, what I'm going to do is give you an object, a work of art that I think is a masterpiece, okay? And to give you about 10 minutes. Step one, you describe what you see, okay? That's the easy part, okay? Then you need to work with, your, with each other in your group and figure out what is the universal message that the artist is trying to convey. Okay. Cool stuff. All right. Let's do you two and you three over here. All right. Okay. All right. This you three in that. Back. Okay. Right. This piece is actually um, was um, made by a blacksmith here in Bedford County. His name is Peter Buchanan. He lives in Big Island. Um, so, um, okay, this first group. First of all, talk to us about what you see. Um, all right. So at the beginning of it, it's very smooth. And then when you, as you go up, it gets a little bumpy. And then it has some holes in it. And then the end, it has some curves, but it's still really smooth. And then it ends at a nice point. 
Okay. Okay. What about you didn't describe? The wood. Yeah, yeah. It has three layers of wood on the bottom, and the last one's um, very larger. Okay. No, I mean, those are descriptors, okay? That's the composition. <laughs> You've got a three step base, okay? You've got a piece of iron that's got bumps or holes drilled, and one of the holes goes all the way through, and then it begins to curve. Okay, so a great description of what the piece is, okay? Now, just because it's beautiful doesn't make it great art. It becomes great art if it has a universal message, okay? <laughs> did you find that universal message in Peter's? Yes, 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 we did. All right, Anna. All right. Start us off. I'll finish it up. Okay, so it has like a wood foundation. Okay, ladies, okay. And we thought that the wood at the bottom was like your support system, like oh. like your friends and family, and or like your morals that you like stand on, you know. And we just thought it was like your, what a person's life was like built on. Wow, nice. So, pretty cool. Then, we described the, um, like the long pole, it's like a path of life. So, at the beginning it's very smooth and easy. So, and then as it continues, so there's like small bumps in the road, and then it gets like, there's, there's holes, which is like more like, um, like challenges you face. But then at the end of your life, you kind of figure it all out, and there's still some like turns, but it's still smooth. And then it ends at the perfect point. So like, hopefully your life ends well. <laughs> wow. That's that that's 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 amazing. All right. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Talk to us, this group, talk to us about the materials, okay? Now, this is iron, okay? How is it very un-iron? Why is this? curved and shaped and it's not straight and, yeah. Okay, it's iron is usually rigid. And then the wood at the bottom is very like straight. And like that's like natural in nature. Mm -hmm. It's take it's the and wood's it's taking like the iron, and the iron's taking what like wood does. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So iron is usually straight. It's rigid. It's heavy, and this almost seems to float. It almost seems like he just twisted it into shape. Okay. Now. Of course, it takes a lot of heat, a lot of fire, and a lot of hammering to get it into that shape. Okay, so he <coughs> disguises the process. Okay, and I thought that was brilliant there at the end. The wood takes on the quality of the iron, and the iron takes on the quality of a living tree. So, very nice. All right, good job. Okay. Wait, can we have a real Huh? <laughs> See, this is what I'm trying to convey. You're going to find a piece of Frida or Diego's work you like, and it's real easy to find the expert that's going to tell you what it means and why it's important. Okay? But you're going to miss out on it if you don't figure it out for yourself. Okay? Okay. So, I think you found the real meaning. All right. All right. Next group. All right. Okay, let me grab a piece so everybody can see it. This one's a little bit, this one's small. It's a miniature. Um, it's done. Okay. All right. This piece was done by Shelly Koopman. She lives at the lake. She and her husband retired here about five years ago. 
she always wanted to be an artist, and it wasn't until she retired that she had the time and the resources to do it. And she does these quirky, quirky little paintings. Um, okay? So, describe first. There's trash cans. Trash cans. Three of them. Um, yellow boots. Mm -hmm. It's blurry. It is blurry. Mm -hmm. There's a purple background. Mm -hmm. What is the man doing? Washing them. Okay. How is he washing? With the hose. With the hose. Okay. That's kind of a strange subject for a picture. What would possibly make this an important work of art? We said, like, even at your worst points in life and, like, when times are tough, you can always do something to make them better. I love that. The title of the piece is Cleaning the Garbage. All right. How many of us in this room have done something stupid, <laughs> hurt somebody's feelings, said something we weren't supposed to, you know? And we had to clean up the mess. <laughs> okay? The mess is still there, but we still have to clean the garbage. Okay? That's beautiful. I thought this would be a tougher one. Y'all did a great job with this. Okay? So, it's, it's a universal message. It's a universal message um, that, we, that we can all share in. Now, there's a huge difference in putting pictures of flowers or pretty landscapes in your house. What if you lived with pictures like this? Okay? that will remind you of deeper ways of looking at life, okay? That words cannot convey the totality of the human experience. The totality of the human experience has to be expressed through art, whether that's painting or sculpture or music or dance or poetry. Words are not enough, okay? But there are often, while words can be deep expressions, there's often deeper expressions. I just wanted to maybe take the picture and show you a little bit of it. For the students who are not here today, okay. so they can see. Oh. That's good. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you, ladies. You. you did a great job. All right. This is my new favorite picture. I have all kinds of favorite pictures, but this is my newest one. This was done by Bruce Mabry. He's an artist that lives in Roanoke. Okay. And everybody saw? Everybody? Good. All right. Let's get a description. What do you see? Children singing. Children singing in church. Okay. Hmm? There's lots of light. There's lots of light. Light coming from the background. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of deep, dark shadows in that picture. They all have different expressions. They all have very different expressions. Do they all want to be there? No. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, they don't all want to be there. Just two, yeah, it does. Uh -huh. Okay, there's another big compositional element that you haven't talked about. The color, the color of red and white and that, that yellow background. But one more. Mm -hmm. Which tells you what? It's very descriptive. Yeah, the Trinity, the church. Yes. They're all African American. They're all African American. There's one more. Oh, I got they're all wearing robes. Yeah. Okay. Why is that significant? They're in the choir. It does. It tells you what kind of church they're in. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a more formal church. And you can imagine them. You can all hear them singing gospel music. Uh huh. Absolutely. 
Why are the roads important as part of the narrative? They're all unified. They're all unified. They're meant to be a unified whole, okay? Just like you'd see the Supreme Court justices in robes. Okay, it makes them stand apart for their special role, okay? Now, the robes are supposed to make them unified, but it, did it work? <laughs> okay, and it didn't work for a couple of reasons. Why? Some of them just don't want to do what they're doing. Some of them don't want to do what they're doing. And some of the robes don't seem to fit. Okay? That's so cool. Told the, the artist told me that he painted this because um, one of these children was his nephew. And I said, <laughs> I assumed it was the one singing. He said, no, it wasn't. It's the one looking at his tennis shoes. <laughs> he just got new tennis shoes. And he kept staring at them. Okay? So, neat picture. Did a great job with the description. But what might be the universal message here? I think it's great. Everyone reacts differently to their situation. What else? They all look like they're focused on different things, so you can't be unified if you're focusing on that's, that is a, that's a great way to describe that. What else? This one's just full of meaning. I just love it. Do you think they chose to wear the choir robes? No, they clearly got put in by mom and dad, didn't they? <laughs> okay? So mom and dad, oh, go ahead. I thought that maybe, um, like, the way that gospel music makes some people feel like it actually means something to some people, right. but it doesn't have as much meaning to others. I think it's great. Sure, sure. But mom and dad had an expectation that it would do for their kids what it does for them, okay? How many of, of us have been in that situation, mom and dad, assuming we're going to want to do something <laughs> or enjoy doing something because they enjoyed it or they found it meaningful, okay? I think it's cool, okay? So it's a picture about little kids singing in the choir, but it's something much more profound that all of us, all of us can relate to. Nice job. Thank y'all. Bravo. See, looking at Frida's and um, Diego's pictures are going to be a piece of cake now. All right, let me grab the gator. All right. my newest acquisition. I just bought it recently from an artist here in Bedford. His name is Bobby Fuller. He has a studio called Barter Town. Okay, and he, he, um, he works from completely recycled material, stuff he finds. Okay, so who wants to describe? Um, well, it has like a lot of textures. A lot of textures. We kind of like saw it as the nails, like it's like a conductor of like electricity because it's like the nails and then wires to the light bulb. So we were kind of thinking it might be something to do with how like we're like depending a lot on like electricity and everything and how we're not as like with nature. Oh. Or like kind of like an alligator is like seen as a beast. So like electricity. Oh. Now, it's, that's wonderful, but let's back up just a minute, because you jumped to the description, the analysis, before we had the, um, so we're going to get back to that, because I think it's brilliant. But you talked about the nails and the wire and the texture, but what else? It's all recycled material. All recycled. Is it good stuff? It kind of looks junky. It kind of just kind of looks junky. Rusted. It's rusted. I think he's had it outside. That's what it was. But yeah, it's rusted. Mm -hmm. 
and he has a wood stove in his um, studio, so it smells like it's smoky. What else do you see? Does it look physically like an alligator? Yeah, I think it does. I think he did a good job with uh, kind of the gesture and the, the physicality of the, the alligator. What else? I mean, it's a real clever use of materials. I mean, even the materials feel like you could hurt yourself. Yeah. It's almost dangerous like the alligator is. And it looks like scales on it. It does look like scales. It sure does. I told our class earlier that um, when um, my dog saw it, it growled because although it's clearly not <laughs> flesh and bones, there's something about the gesture that looks menacing. Okay, so let's get back to, or let's move toward the universal meaning. Okay, we talked about electricity and nature. Okay, what else? Maybe about like the recycled materials and how they can be used into making Right. I mean, I mean, it's very. It's, I mean, stuff we cast aside, and he's turned it into something quite interesting. I don't know if you'd call this beautiful, but you'd call it interesting. What are the teeth made of? Roofing nails. I think it's something to do with the waste that we throw away. Uh, uh, the waste that we just throw away creates major problems. Comes a piece. That, I think you've hit the nail on the head. I think that's exactly what it is. This waste is what we're doing to this creature's environment, okay? The creature becomes what we've done to his habitat, okay? So, what does his just, I think you're right. What do you think how is that reflected, I should say, or should ask, in terms of his gesture? He's aggressive. He is aggressive. He's angry. Right? Almost seems like he's in pain. Ah, I like that too. In pain. Mm -hmm. Could he be tangled, maybe? Ah, uh, could be tangled and trapped, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But not trapped in the sense that there's a trap on him. But he is trapped. I mean, I think that's what's so cool about this stuff. Okay? Is that his ability to capture not only a physical form of an alligator in a very clever way. Okay? That makes it good. Okay? But it doesn't make it great. Great art has to have that universal message, a deeper way of thinking and reflecting on life. Okay. So, when you guys, has, do you feel like you could be more confident in looking at Frida or Diego's work? Can I ask what people have seen? So I have, some people have looked at their work. What people have seen so far? She draws a lot of flowers, and there's the one picture of like two of her bodies, and then like the heart. Mm -hmm. And I did. I really don't understand that one. That's the one I just can't get. Well, I think you could. There's two ways you can do that. You can um, you can read her life because basically all. Art is autobiographical. Okay, I take my experience and I turn it into a visual form instead of words. Okay, so it's autobiographical in the sense that the picture is about freedom. Okay, but that makes it interesting. Okay, what makes it great is how that that um, 
that experience is universal. Now, I think sometimes we cheat or we take the easy way out and we let her life tell us what the picture is about. Okay, we can talk about her car, her, her accident on the on the streetcar and near death and all these other kinds of of experiences, and then we say, oh, that's neat, that's a neat picture or neat expression of her life. But if we don't take it the next step, so sometimes I think it's more interesting to look at the picture and decipher it using the technique we just practiced. And then I think we get a deeper meaning and a truer meaning because art is about communicating something. And then go back and read about her life or read what an art historian has said about it. And you can say, oh, well, they can have that meaning too. There's a wonderful term, multivalent, where images can have multiple meanings, multiple deep meanings. And I think that's what great art can do. Anybody else? In terms of looking at Frida's or Yeah. Sure. And we talk about her politics and her relationship with Diego and her own illnesses. There was a lot of physical and emotional pain in her life. Okay. Yes. It was a lot about her baby that she didn't have. Mm -hmm. A lot of that was the pain that she felt. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And in a culture that would value her more being a mother than being an artist. Mm -hmm. You're succeeding as a woman if you've had a child, okay? If you're an artist, that's no different, okay? So it was a neat, you know, she lived between different worlds and different expectations of who she was supposed to be, you know? Haven't we all been there? Anybody else? 